What's up, internet humans? I'm Joseph Volpe, deputy tech editor at Mashable, and today we're going to talk about what else? Very expensive phones. But this time, there's a twist. Today's very expensive phone is actually, wait for it, expensive. Oh, my sides! <laughs> I'm too good with the punnery. Say hello to the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra. Now, before I dive into the good, the bad, and the ugly with this new phone, we need to address the elephant in the room. My thick, juicy, Vienna sausage-like, but apparently no good for piano playing, fingers. Yes, it's okay, don't cry for me. I learned the out of that instrument anyway, but there is one thing that consistently stands in the way of my lovable stubs. One massive obstacle that has drilled deep down into my psyche and caused me daily frustration. Touch typing on a smartphone screen, I just cannot do it. Not two thumb typing, nor gesture swiping. My fingers aren't svelte enough. So won't someone please scoop up that physical keyboard patent from Blackberry and save me already? Until that day comes, I have Samsung to thank for providing a solution to a problem no one talks about. The company's S Pen, or what we'd call a stylus in normal human speak, is a digital pen that lives inside of the new S22 Ultra. This phone, by the way, currently sits at the top of Samsung's flagship smartphone line with an $1199 starting price. And there's a reason for that. It's got this beautiful, seamless, curved 6.8 inch WQHD Plus AMOLED display with a 120 hertz refresh rate, a monstrous quad camera system on back, and a considerable selfie cam on front. I know, I know, there's a focus on the cameras. Let's all feign shock. But this time around, Samsung claims the Ultra can make nighttime shots that look like daytime. Okay, that's not exactly what it claimed. The company's horrendously obvious marketing term for the Ultra software imaging powers is nightography. But we'll get to all that in just a bit. Let's focus on this baby's body. Much like last year's S21 Ultra, the in-display fingerprint sensor has made a comeback, and this time it's actually usable? Like, impressively so. In fact, I'd like Samsung's engineers to have a word with Google's Pixel 6 team, because the experience is just so, so much faster and more responsive on the S22 Ultra. I've never, not once, not even for a second, had to think about resorting to a pin code or attempting a second or third fingerprint press to unlock. It just works. So brava, Samsung. Now, can you get those same engineers on the team that decides on the phone's branding? Okay, thanks, bye. What I'm not too thrilled about is the actual design of the phone. It's anonymous. That's really the best way to describe it. There aren't any signature flourishes that make this device stand out in the crowd. It's a cold, sleek metal and glass slab with edges that are so smooth and rounded that it actually makes gripping this thing a little difficult. What's more, it's a slippery little sucker. Do you know how many times this phone almost went flying out of my hands and onto the cruel, freezing cold, by the way, and unforgiving NYC streets? 10 times. I counted. It happened 10 times. So long story short, put a case on this thing. That way you can give it a little personality and protection. Oh, and I should mention that it comes in phantom white, phantom black, these names, green and burgundy. But just get it in black and cover it up. Some other things to note. It's 5G, no surprise there, and Wi-Fi 6E capable, which just means faster wireless speeds if you have a compatible router. You probably don't. And it's rated IP68, so you can get grimy with it. I mean, please, don't go diving with it in your pocket or dance with it in a dust storm at Burning Man. It should survive those activities, but like, what kind of a money to burn monster are you? If you self-identify with that statement, then please ping me after this and I'll send you my Venmo. The S22 Ultra, as you might expect, comes in a variety of configurations, but do take note that the $1199 starting price will only climb higher and higher as you kit out your Ultra with more memory and storage. And yes, it's got a generous 5,000 milliamp hour battery to back up that massive and power hungry screen. 
The Ultra's got enough juice to definitely last you until bedtime, and then some, depending on your phone habits. You'll wind up with just about a half charge left if you're like me, and just spend your time scrolling through Twitter, browsing on Chrome, or reading links on Pocket, and watching YouTube clips to help you beat very difficult and frustrating sections of video games, or watching clips of Tom Holland on Graham Norton. If you make even moderate use of the cameras, well, expect to have about 20% charge left by the time you slip into your PJs to grab some Zs. But no matter how you function day to day, you will not have to plug the Ultra in until some point the next day. All right, fine. Since we're already on the topic, let's talk about the cameras. They are, as you might expect, awesome. On the back of this austere phone, you're getting a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera with a field of view that's 120 degrees, a 108 megapixel main camera with a field of view that's 85 degrees, a 10 megapixel telephoto camera with 3x optical zoom, and 10 megapixel telephoto camera with 10x optical zoom. And on the front is a 40 megapixel selfie camera with an 80 degree field of view. I tested this absolute overkill of a setup on the worst kind of winter day in NYC. A deceptively sunny one. And my nose, fingers, and toes paid the price. But the photos were gorge. I'm pretty good with snapping shots on my own, but I felt especially skilled when I'd review literally anything I took with the Ultra. The main cam takes shots with such balanced colors, shadows, and highlights. It's also true to life, which is something I very much appreciate as I'm team human realism. And there's such crisp detail, even when you zoom in on a regular shot. Even 3x and 10x telephoto shots have excellent detail. 100x space zoom will net you, well, the same sort of blurred impressionistic image, and that's if you can even stabilize your hands to snap the shot. Samsung also added in some fun editing options like object eraser, which can wipe out people and things that are up your otherwise perfect shot, a remaster photo option which does auto retouching like the name implies, and even some face effects if you're the type who believes in what you look like on Instagram. As for those nightography shots, they're good, not amazing, and deaf not worthy of some tired marketing term. There's a yellowish hue to shots you'll take in this mode, and the lighting is somewhat overdone. It's almost like those overlit studio shots you had to take as a kid, you know, for school. Again, it's not bad, but when I took a nighttime portrait shot, I looked, well, bizarrely shiny. It enhanced the brightness on my dewy skin. P.S. it was literally about to rain. And made me look like I was wearing shimmer powder. No hate there, shimmer powder is dope, but that's not my look, Samsung. Not anymore, hard wink. Now. If you're in the market for the S22 Ultra, which is to say, you like to spend the monies, honeys, then I'm also assuming you've used or are aware of other similar high-end phones like the iPhone 13 Pro and the Pixel 6 Pro. I mention these phones because really, image quality is an absolute banger all around, no matter which phone maker you pledge allegiance to. It's just, well, you can get those other two phones for hundreds of dollars less, so keep that in mind before you add to cart. Okay, I think I've S spent enough time on the cameras. Let's talk about that S Pen. This little thing makes you feel like a boss when you're using the Ultra. Seriously, you can be doing absolutely nothing of importance, mindlessly consuming TikToks, and somehow using this S Pen to scroll just confers a sense of power and importance. It's a nice ego fluff, but that's not what makes it so great and so essential to an oversized smartphone experience. When you drag the S Pen's tip across the screen, it manages to somehow feel absolutely silky and yet necessarily rubbery, gliding about when you need it to and coming to a hard, confident stop so you can affect gestures or tap on icons or buttons or links. It also helps to relieve any hand cramping you might get from double fisting a phone of the size as you can calmly grip it with one and lazily navigate to the outer reaches using the S Pen. 
There are even sweet bonuses like the ability to hover over a photo comparison slider on a web page and move it left and right without touching the screen, as I did when checking out PS4 and PS5 graphical comparisons of Horizon Forbidden West, or even scrolling down in an app by just hovering the S Pen at the bottom of a page. And yes, latency on this thing is low, which is clutch if you're keen to scribble your very own brand of chicken scratch on screen and convert that to text for note taking. But you can also use the S Pen for screen selection, live messages, AR doodles, translation, and more. I mean, sure, you can do all that if you want, but I think that's missing the fundamental point of this thing. It lets you swipe type or gesture type like a friggin' pro. Gone are the days when I'd have to constantly redo my clumsily banged out text messages or emails because I couldn't see which letters my swollen fingers were blocking on screen. With this magic wand, I could neatly and gracefully connect letters and form sentences. And as a result, I actually found that I was using my phone more often than I normally do to take notes or even write long emails. Plus, and this is a big one, for those of you who live in places that experience Four Seasons, it is crucial in cold weather. You can leave those smartphone-friendly gloves at home because all you need to keep on using your phone like normal is this slim little wand. But wait, there's more. Samsung, as it is known to do, has packed in a f load of features for the S Pen and they are known as Air Actions. This basically means that you can control certain apps or launch functions using the button on the side of the S Pen. So, say you wanna snap a shot, but you don't want to hold the Ultra in hand, you can just press that button to launch the camera, and then press again to snap a shot. Or, if you're listening to Spotify, you can use it to skip music tracks and even set other app-specific actions. It's neat, it's handy, and it's gonna require you to sink some time digging into all of these menus. And that's the Galaxy S22 Ultra in a nutshell. If you couldn't already tell, I like this thing, I do. I think it's ugly, but that's what phone cases are for. I mean, it works like a charm, the display and refresh rate are a match made in heaven, and you're gonna love the results you get with those cameras. And then there's the splendid S Pen, which really every large phone should have as a standard nowadays. It's just such a quality of life enhancement. And once you get used to it, it's hard to go back to relying on just your, I don't know, I'm assuming long, svelte, vampiric-like fingers. The thing is, a starting price of $1199 is just obscene. That's laptop territory, people. And you can get a phone that's just as excellent for cheaper. If you do choose to opt for the S22 Ultra, well, no shame. Me and my piano playing stubs will understand.